Hey everybody, thank you for joining us this afternoon. We're just gonna give everybody just about 30 more seconds and we'll get started right at the top of the hour. In the meantime, Shane will be singing elevator music for everybody's enjoyment. <laughs> Fortunately, singing my, it wasn't, uh, it's not my specialty. Humming, humming elevator music. So, uh, you know, I'm a dancer, not a singer. If you sure. want to take the uh, vocals, I'll do some, I'll do some, some chair moves. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to embarrass anybody. I'll keep it low, low key today. That's right. You are wearing a choice shirt. Okay. Oh, you're right. You know what? That's why I should have run the, uh, sh that's why I got, got my patch right here. So we're good now. <laughs> okay. Well, you guys are in for a treat this afternoon. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Dana Steinloggy. Awesome. Thanks, Ellie. Yeah, thank you, Ellie. And uh, hey, thanks everybody for joining us. Uh, I'm Dana Steinloggy with Choice Solutions, one of the partners, co-lead up our sales team. Um, just want to thank everybody for for taking the time to to join us. Um, very, very excited about the content information that, that Oz and Shane Kay are going to go through and, and help everybody with. Um, we will have the opportunity, if you have any questions during it, uh, there's a lot of content to go through that we're gonna focus on, but if there's room at the end, uh, we'll get to some Q&A and, and dive through everything. So very excited about the information. For, for those of you that might not be familiar with Choice Solutions, I was just gonna share just for a couple minutes on our team, uh, who we are, what we do, and then uh, turn it over to Oz and Shane Case so they can dive through all the great stuff they've got for everybody. So um, just a little bit about our team. You know, we've had the opportunity to help uh, around 750 different cu customers over the last five, six years across 43 different states. Uh, mainly our presence in the central part of the U.S. as far as people. We also have a growing presence down the southeast as well. Uh, some customers and, and organizations we've had the opportunity to assist. Um, many of them are, are going to be joining and part of this conversation here uh, today. But we've worked across healthcare, financial services, uh, retail, a manufacturing, number of different companies, a lot of awesome uh, customers and organizations we've got the uh, the opportunity to be a partner with. And some of what we're doing, you know, as organizations, you um, you have, you know, you have a focus to improve the employee experience within your workforce. So you have a, a workforce, that, especially now, that, that needs a consistent workspace, whether they're going to be uh, continuing to work from home or, you know, working from the office or the hybrid. So a combination of working from home, working from the office. So a consistent workspace experience, no matter where they're working from, but also as a business, you know, increasing demands to make sure you got proper security and control uh, on, on in that environment as well. All the while, you've got, you know, this transition that your organization at some level is is, is part of in the trans transition to the cloud. So whether it's, you know, your legacy apps, uh, legacy infrastructure approaches and adoption of the hybrid cloud, SaaS, uh, everything else, that's all kind of going going on as well. So you might have traditional app uh, virtualization or VDI deployments, and now you got new considerations like, oh, do, do I con continue with VDI? Do I look at DAS? Do I look at uh, various other things? And that's, that's a little bit of kind of the basis of what Oz and Shane K are gonna go through today. Um, and, and help and maybe answers to, to some of the new questions that you might have. Um, our focus, our team, you know, we want to help you uh, adopt simpler, more secure IT environments. Uh, that's from the data center or the cloud service all the way out to the endpoint. And with that, you know, we have uh, just our company, I think what you'll find in, in working with us, uh, one, and, and we'll definitely be on display here today, a couple of elite architects within our team, but a, a fantastic team with a, a lot of expertise in-house and, and great knowledge to, to, to work with you and help you solve challenges uh, in this particular area. We've got a great track record. Um, when we work with you, take a very consultative approach. You know, we want to listen, learn, understand kind of existing investments, what you have in place before we start talking about you know developing a strategy for the future. A lot of great uh, innovative solutions. Uh, it's just very part of our DNA to work with a lot of uh, innovative solutions and services that that emerge and innovate and and helping you adopt those as appropriate. And uh, more than anything, just great people, good genuine people. And hopefully through working with us, you'll find uh, just focused on, on your success and helping you guys be successful with these with these strategies and these journeys. So uh, 
few of our strategic partners um, will definitely be highlighting different things with Citrix and Microsoft today, but also Nutanix, IGEL, Palo Alto, uh, Nerdio, that kind of factor into some of our end user computing solutions. Uh, specifically with Citrix, we've been a partner with them since 1992. Uh, a couple of uh, uh, CTPs, which are some of the, the, the highest level designation professionals uh, globally uh, from, a, from a Citrix perspective, a couple of them that will be leading up this event today. But we've got a fantastic team um, and bench to help you with projects and, and services here. We've got uh, uh, Platinum Plus accreditation as well as we also, for some customers, we offer Citrix as a CSP, so as a, as a monthly service and what we can do. And then from a Microsoft perspective, we're a gold, gold partner with them. And, um, you know, so, so we talk about Azure Virtual Desktop and Windows Virtual Desktop. Um, and kind of learn more about that. We're, we're heavily investing in growing our competencies and our ability, our knowledge and skill sets to add value to, to different challenges or different initiatives you might be working on around the Microsoft Cloud. So that's, uh, that's the main thing, just a little bit about us, but really I want to make sure and get this turned over to uh, Oz and Shane Kay so they can go through all the content and great insights and information uh, with you guys. Again, thank you all for joining. If you have questions, please put them in the, the chat window. We may not have time, but if we have time at the end, uh, they'll certainly get to it. Uh, and um, just these guys have a lot of fun, but uh, no uh, incredibly uh, incredibly renowned uh, for their expertise and, and what they know. So I'll turn it over to you guys. And uh, thanks again for joining us today. Yeah, thanks, Dana. I guess I'll go first. Time check, great, Dana. Spot on, baby. All right, so yeah, uh, Scott Osborne, um, many of you know me as, as Oz, uh, referred to here, Senior Solutions Architect for us. Um, I lead the North Central region here and I'm a co-EUC lead with the, with our boy Shane here on the other side. So I'm also a CTP, um, NTC on the Nutanix side for quite a few years and uh, newly minted uh, NVIDIA NGCA. So uh, that's their group uh, community advisor award there as well. So glad to be here. You're muted. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. Did that last time too. It's got a new mic, so that's, I'm gonna blame the mic on this one. So, ah, oh, starting off great. Damn. All right, buddy. Just redo the, like the last minute. Anyway, it's Shane Kleiner. That's me, it's the the man that always doesn't unmute. Senior Solutions Architect for uh, for Choice, uh, so Southeast Regional Lead, uh, counterpart to Oz as uh, as co EUC lead here for uh, Choice Solutions. So I'm a Citrix CTP as well, and uh, also uh, pretty proud of my uh, Amazon Prime, uh, Netflix, and mostly uh, Hulu addition to my uh, certification stack uh, subscription. So. I guess first step of admitting you have an addiction is to get out there in the open. So doing that there today, and a lot of my extra time goes to binge watching. So yeah, we, anyway, we like to make finish the startup so. on Netflix. It's really good. Check it out. We're gonna, make, we're gonna keep it fun. <laughs> so yeah. So first up is an audience poll. So yeah, take take a minute. Uh, well, uh, 30 seconds. Uh, no rush. And um, and scan the uh, QR code. Oz, you got that kicked off, ready to roll, right? Yep. Give me a second. We'll get ready to roll on that. All right. Let me see. So it's just uh, just three questions. So just take a take a second on each one, kind of just pump through those. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, I think we gave everyone enough time to scan the QR code. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, and click next here, so we can see the polls live. So let's kind of get a feel for what everyone's like here today. Everyone's environment. So the first question is, you know, EEC specific landscape today, or are you building towards in the next five years? What does that look like? So so far. Um, you know, majority of the folks uh, basically are, oh, look at that, someone uh, public cloud only. Uh, we got private cloud or on-prem only, right? And then we have the hybrid and we're seeing, which which is what we see when we talk to a lot of customers. It's interesting to see this kind of changing in real time. I wonder if folks are opening their uh, browser tabs in private mode and adding news. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it is, so it's interesting to see hybrid is kind of, as uh, so you'd probably agree, right? That's what we see when we talk to most of our customers is really kind of a hybrid uh, multi-cloud approach uh, when when dealing with EUC uh, environments. Would you agree yeah. with that? Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, we, we have a little, little, a few customers here and there going all in public cloud, but definitely multi-hybrid cloud is the more prevalent. So yeah, yep, it looks let's like go to the next question. Yeah, we actually just recently finished up an Azure only one uh, for a customer. They went all in kind of greenfield. So I think that might have been them that voted on that. <laughs> All right, so if a public cloud provider, uh, which one? So 
Let's uh nice. Okay, so again, kind of the multi-cloud approach, and that's again what we're starting to see with our customers is starting to see a hybrid approach after some of the recent uh recent outages, some of them are, some of them global and kind of you know not all the eggs in one basket approach, right? So that's kind of familiar to what we're seeing as well out there in the field. Yeah, it does track. Correct. Yep. Interesting. No AWS or GCP only for right now. Makes sense because this is an AVD Citrix webinar. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not a uh, Amazon Workspaces webinar, but you know. Correct. Uh, all right. <laughs> Let's hit that next one up. This will be the last of the poll here. So what we didn't tell you is this whole webinar is just poll questions. Yeah, it's just 72 poll questions. And yeah, so do you have an existing uh, app and desktop delivery solution? Oops, sorry about that. Yeah. Board. Come on, up. Dude. Sorry about that. So interesting. So we're, so we're a little heavier on the Citrix side. We do have uh, one Microsoft newly minted AVD, Azure Virtual Desktop. For those of you who didn't know, Microsoft uh, rebranded from Windows Virtual Desktop to Azure Virtual Desktop makes sense when you look at kind of the simplistic naming that they have across the board so all right no one's running nada and uh no other so sounds good i think we're good on the polls let's uh let's rock and roll through our through our content and uh get into the meat of this all right, all right. that's right i have control <laughs> all right so <laughs> all right so uh so first off you know you know why consider cloud or hybrid uh, for your VDI solution for your workspace. And we put VDI in quotes because that's what's used a lot in conversation, but really in reality, VDI is just one delivery model, right? It's one, one method uh, in, in, in your secure remote access delivery, right? So your secure workspace. So uh, VDI is virtual desktop infrastructure, but obviously there's apps, desktops, seamless apps, et cetera. So um, first step is kind of flexibility and efficiency. So really scalable architecture, right? When you're dealing with the cloud, it's obviously highly scalable makes sense. Um, you know, obviously you can have the same depending on your infrastructure on-prem. Uh, Evergreen platform is probably one of the one of the greatest uh, options there, but with Evergreen comes a cost, obviously. Uh, but platform not as not so uh, not just your platform as a service offering, which comes from Citrix or AVD, but also the actual instances, right? So if you're you know dealing with a, you know an education environment or a manufacturing environment where you have GPUs, for instance, we were talking about that the other day, Oz, you know, they go and make this physical investment. That card is is depreciating after day one, right? That hardware is depreciating. You're you're on that, right? Whereas in on, in the cloud instances, right, you can just easily go ahead and up that instance. You're always going to be on the latest and greatest. Obviously, there's there's costs associated with that, but it's nice to always ensure that your workload is on the latest and greatest there from a platform perspective. Simplified imaging and patching obviously is a is a huge win there, uh, and that's kind of across the board with uh, with with both solutions. We'll we'll talk about that as we get into this. Cost optimization and power management is key when you're dealing with the cloud, right? Uh, the cloud is not cheap. Every single thing in the cloud costs money. I uh, don't want anyone to tell you otherwise, right? Uh, when you talk about, you know, disk, disk access, disk scales linearly, right? So your performance is it's tied to the capacity of those disks in Azure. You have to keep those sorts of things in mind. You know, your compute, everything costs money. So being able to, you know, uh, scale up the environment and scale it down based on utilization and cost optimization is super key. Uh, people, a lot of more people are moving to an OpEx model, so that's obviously key for, for cloud there as well. Enhanced security, if you look at kind of the ransomware and a lot of the stuff that's going on recently in the news and has been for a while, a lot of it comes from uh, from full, full VPN access. So we've we've been talking to our customers for a long time, obviously being in the EEC space for a long period of time, uh, but we're really, really uh, looking to see more and more customers move away from full VPN and doing you know secure remote app and desktop delivery. With either solution, you can accomplish that goal enriched micro segmentation because you're really dealing with software defined networking at the at the cloud level uh it really enhances those abilities for micro segmentation between each of those you know kind of the east west traffic in your in your vnets or or your vpcs if you're talking aws world so enhanced security controls you have a lot of security controls which we'll talk through actually today uh, across each of those solutions much more on the citrix side but we'll talk through that first ability is kind of the standard that you hear right you know seasonal kind of contractor temp being able to scale based on demand scale based on cpu load but what does it look like in each of those solutions is very different pay as you go pricing for dr as well as just traditional use cases allow you to kind of you know instead of paying for those instances to be reserved you can actually kind of pay as you go maybe it's more efficient maybe it's not it depends on the business use case and obviously api support it's important to understand what that looks like when you look to 
integrate into your existing ecosystem, maybe service now or whatever else you might have. So just a couple of notes there. Anything you want to add there, Oz? Or? Oh man, you covered it. Solid. Sweet. Sweet, dude. So yeah, so kind of our outlook and kind of our framework as we look through this, there's a lot of different areas across each of these solutions, discussion points and test cases that you can look at when you're kind of comparing the two. But we hit on these four key topics as we thought these would be kind of the best approach, right? So what does the architecture look like? What are some of the key? And we say key because these are the areas we'll show you in the next slide where we feel are the most uh, the most beneficial to look at to help and drive your decision as to what makes the most sense for your organization. What does the licensing approach look like? And then pros and cons of each solution. And licensing, we're covering licensing and not pricing because pricing is subjective, right? It really depends on you know time of the month, who your rep is, you know, uh, you know what what kind of stuff you got going on the side. And I'm just kidding, but it really, in the end of the day, it, it depends on it's it's definitely dependent on your use case, uh, your scenario, your organization. So that's why we're not covering uh, pricing today. So with that, uh, these are kind of the, some of the areas that we spoke about, right? So we, we look at kind of operational and administrative aspects. So we want to look at monitoring and alerting, provisioning, auto scale capabilities, service desk integration, what tools are available for the help desk? Is there API support? What features and functionality? So things like image management, remote access capabilities, app provisioning. We'll look at security. What kind of controls and lockdown uh, capabilities are there from a policy standpoint? How is, how is each of these solutions licensed across the board? Because that's really uh, important to understand. Choice, the ability for choice, right? And, and choice meaning, you know, can you, you know, can you look at different, uh, integrate different identity providers? Like, like the world's becoming more and more open, more integrated. So that's, to me, that's an important thing. But again, it, it depends on your organization. You know, do you have the ability to support multiple clouds or different infrastructure providers? Uh, different user experience things like protocol, UEM we'll talk through a little bit today. And then the last piece is kind of building configuration. You know, what does the install process look like? You know, what kind of endpoint integration, identity? Do you have the ability to do hybrid or not? But the key thing to really understand, so those are kind of our categories we're looking at today. And then really understanding that each of these categories, really you can have different scenarios and that's why the business case is so important. Not just the business case, but also understanding the security and compliance aspect as well as the operational pieces across each of these areas in the stack here. So with that said, let's uh, let's let's hit on Citrix first. Um, so I'll be talking to Citrix, and uh, Ozzy will be hitting on the Microsoft aspect here right. in the video we, combo. Yeah. And you've noticed we've color coded these all appropriately to the branding of who we're talking. Yeah, to. I'm pretty proud of us on the color coding. That was, that was pretty pretty cool. So the first thing on the apps and desktop side is is at, is considered Azure only, and that's recently was uh, Citrix managed desktops from Citrix. It got rebranded to Citrix Virtual Apps and Desktop Standard for Azure. So that's our first one, and then we'll be looking at the hybrid multi-cloud. And we say hybrid multi-cloud because using Citrix Virtual Apps and Desktop Service Advanced and Premium, you have the ability to do uh, hybrid in the sense where you can have multiple resource locations, which we'll talk through today. So the first step is to talk about the architecture. So the first thing that people hear when they hear Citrix Cloud is Citrix is hosting their own workload. So we do have a lot of Microsoft folks on the call as well, so we just want to point this out, that Citrix is not an infrastructure as a service company, they're not hosting your workload. So if that is some you know, a misconception that's out there, understand that's not the case. Citrix is more of a platform as a service, right? So they're, they basically took a lot of the products that you've known through the years, things like virtual apps and desktops, Citrix ADC, the ADM for the management and monitoring capabilities of the ADCs, uh, WEM, workspace environment management, et cetera. They created those as kind of microservices that are all running on this platform as a service known as Citrix, right? And then uh, just it's what it's showing down here is uh, there's the, the ability of choice. And that's a common theme I think you'll see with, with, with Citrix as we go through this. Again, for this folks that have been doing Citrix for a while, this is probably a familiar slide. But because there are folks that, that are just doing AVD on the call, we'll mention this and we'll talk through it very quickly. Traditional infrastructure on the left, you had to manage, monitor, and maintain delivery controllers. You have multi-site. You have obviously duplicates of this at each location. You had SQL you had to worry about, you had Studio, Director for monitoring, your licensing, storefront for the access layer, Citrix ADCs, those are all individually managed, monitor, uh, managed, monitor and maintained. And then you had what really matters to you, which is your, your, your uh, VDAs, right? And, and your individual workloads. So those always stayed on-prem. So what Citrix did is they kind of packaged that all up and they said, you know, we're gonna do CVAD service. We're gonna basically take on the delivery controller piece, the SQL piece, the workspace layer, so storefront goes away, Studio is going to be in the cloud, monitoring and licensing. And all you have to worry about is your VDAs. And that's what Citrix did. All you have to have is cloud connectors in your resource location. 
There are reasons why you still want to have, in some cases, storefront and ADC. We can talk through that. Uh, at, we'll kind of weave that in through the presentation. But point is that that kind of got greatly simplified there, which is pretty awesome. So when we talk specifically about the CVAD standard uh, for Azure architecture, that's kind of a, there's a lot of things here that a lot of folks uh, might not know is, which was pretty cool when Citrix built this. They really wanted to build a turnkey DAS solution uh, where Citrix can actually, you can actually do a direct um, Azure purchase through the marketplace and actually stand up CBAD service uh, for Azure standard. So what this looks like is you have basically your Citrix cloud control plane over here. And then what you have on the right, basically you can have a Citrix managed Azure tenant. So if you didn't know anything about Azure, you could have Citrix actually manage those VDAs manage the cloud connector, um, and then basically the individual Azure components. And you can then peer those into, if you had your own Azure subscription with your own Active Directory, you could basically peer those in and not have to worry about managing and maintaining those pieces. You just worry about your image. So that's actually pretty neat and something specific to, um, to, to CBAD serve, uh, uh, Azure for stand, uh, standard Azure uh, implementation. And uh, what's neat is when you look at kind of the features and functionalities of, of CBAD standard for Azure, as I mentioned before, it's built for simplicity. It's the only solution today from Citrix. Doesn't mean it won't be coming down the line, but that supports non-domain join. So Azure AD joined, non-domain joined basically uh, VDAs. So there's maybe reasons you want to do that from a contractor perspective or whatnot. You have the ability to do that. It can actually peer into your, your on-prem locations. You can easily spin up an environment with site-to-site with -site VPN, you know, VNet peering if you have an existing subscription. You can use Citrix managed subscription. We'll look at the quick deploy wizard. Web Studio capabilities. So they actually took, if, you're, if you've been a CVAD service customer for a long time, they essentially took the entire console and they made it HTML5, right? So it, you basically would log in through HTML5 and you'd get this 64-bit console. So, so over the course of the last two years, they've been building RESTful APIs and now probably the last three to six months, it's all Web Studio now, which is pretty awesome. We'll, we'll take a look at that today. Citrix optimized images, there's actually, we'll take a look at that as well. There's also um, optimized images directly from Citrix that you have access to. Basic monitoring is built in, which is pretty slick. Auto scaling and power management. And it's Azure only plus remote PC. Obviously through the pandemic through the last year, a lot of things changed for a lot of people, a lot of organizations. Remote PC was an absolute stellar uh, solution. That's where you can access your physical PCs at your location without VPN, putting the VDA directly on those physical PCs. You can actually do that with uh, CBAT standard for Azure. With a, with a couple clicks. So that was a pretty nice add-on they did there. CBAT Advanced, um, what you're looking at there is basically, you know, the, the on top of that, what you saw before uh, from an architecture standpoint is exactly the same thing for CVAD Advanced and Premium. Same thing from a platform as a service, same thing as a cloud connectors and resource locations. What changes is your features and functionalities. And so what we have here is WIM, Workspace Environment Management, been around for a long time. They've greatly enhanced that since since a couple of years ago. You have resource management, so CPU memory optimization, really did a great job on the security controls. So you know, uh, uh, jailbreak protection. Uh, they just implemented a new feature for process hier uh, hierarchy control, so to prevent the jailbreaking, privilege escalation, and general UEM controls are all part of WIM, which is pretty cool. So kind of environment lockdown and things like that. App layering's been been there a while uh, since the um, Unidesk purchase, but that's there. You can do layered layered images. That's another piece that you have there. And really, the premium piece is at the big add-ons. There are really session recording. So if you are an organization that needs session recording, that's an add-on. Unfortunately, that's not an add-on for CBAD standard for Azure. Just uh, WEM is an add-on. These other things can't be purchased as an add-on, um, or session recording can, but advanced monitoring uh, can as well. So, uh, so session recording basically is, you know, it records your session, both app and desktop. It's intelligent. You can pause and resume it based on triggers. It'll, you can have it auto trigger um, uh, based on security events. Um, that will all roll up into security analytics, which is an add-on. Uh, has service desk integration into monitor, uh, or what used to be formerly director. So that's really a nice solution and a nice add-on, not just for help desk and troubleshooting, but also for compliance capabilities. That's all built into the premium solution. And then advanced monitoring and alerting is built in. Uh, we can do advanced reporting and alerting. All features and functionalities, we only highlighted this, are basically on the QR code to the right. So if you scan that, it'll take you to a live dynamic matrix uh, that's that's there. And the last thing is across the board, uh, there's basically multi-factor across the board. Um, you have bring your own identity. So with Workspace, as we'll show you here in a second, 
Uh, basically, you can bring your own identity with SAML 2.0 that was just added into Workspace as a service. Workspace, again, is the evolution of Storefront, where it's all platform as a service uh, inside of Citrix Cloud for accessing your environment. You log in through there. It has direct Azure AD and Okta integration. Service continuity is the evolution of localhost cache. They built a whole new solution for offline availability. It's tech preview right now. Those are the reasons why you still needed Storefront and ADCs on-prem. Uh, service continuity is going to replace that. That's in tech preview today, only for workspace app. Eventually, it'll support the web release. Gateway service. That's a, to, Traditionally, if you need remote access into your Citrix environment, it basically required you to have a Citrix ADC. Now you can do a gateway as a service without touching anything but a radio button in your portal. You have remote access into your environment. That's pretty powerful. Auto scale and power management, which we will talk through later. Federated also with a custom service that was built by Citrix. So one of the big things when you're dealing with a SAML authentication protocol is when you go to log into Windows, Windows doesn't understand SAML, so you get a double prompt for authentication, right? So Citrix created a fast service, which basically will hook into your PKI and mint a smart card on the fly, all seamless to the user. So you do get single sign-on with Okta, with Ping, with Duo, with Azure AD uh, as identity providers into your environment. Again, this is a single site, multi-resource location. So one pane of glass for management, Multiple resource locations can be different cloud providers, can be different uh, on-prem locations, and it's all seamless. HCX across, obviously is across the board. Citrix has been doubling down on their, on their experience uh, across the board for, for their remoting protocol for the last 30 years. That's their bread and butter. Um, and then uh, what, let me keep moving here. So before we get into that, so demo time, um, I'm just going to pop into this through quickly here. So basically, this is what it looks like for standard for Azure and desktop service. You basically have a quick deploy and a web studio for uh, CVAT standard for Azure. And then on the advanced service, you have full configuration. You'll notice user environment management. Quick deploy, we just did this for the sake of time. Basically looks a little bit different. Doesn't look like your traditional console. You basically will have uh, kind of your instance sizes. You'll have uh, the different disk types, number of sessions per machine in your image there. You go to desktops and apps. You'll just see your single desktop. You'll see your applications. You have no ability to do advanced delegation. Basically, everything, everyone that's a subscriber sees all apps, again, because that's quick deploy. What's neat is they enabled Web Studio for Azure Standard, where you can do advanced de delegation now. Um, subscribers is where you would subscribe. Machines, again, the concept of catalogs, or, in, or sorry, delivery groups goes away, and they just have a single thing as a catalog to simplify things for people that aren't familiar with Citrix going forward. Uh, and then the last thing is power management is kind of built in that as what we're showing here, power and uh, management. The monitoring is also built in, so you have full full on monitoring of your solution. So you can you can see kind of real time sessions and failures and average log on duration. You can drill into each individual session and see metrics as well, like uh, ICA latency. Uh, you know how long the session's been active for, what applications are running, and terminate processes if required. Licensing basically looks uh, looks like this. So. Uh, CBAD standard for Azure basically is can be purchased uh, yearly, uh, monthly is kind of a big one. That's the only one that can be purchased on a monthly basis as needed. Uh, so that's basically user device and concurrent can be purchased directly for the Azure marketplace, purchased via a partner or the marketplace, uh, allows for the use of the AVD entitlement. So Windows Virtual Desktop entitlement, Azure Virtual Desktop, Oz is going to talk about that here in a minute. Um, well, basically, uh, so the CVAD standard advanced and premium uh, basically is user device and CCU. It's subscription or yearly. This is the on-prem product. For those of you that don't know, perpetual licensing is going away, and it has gone away. Uh, you have for what you have, but any new net purchases are subscription-based going forward. So transit, there is a transition to trade up to the CVAD service. There is no uh, post-2003 uh, CVAD release. There is no public cloud support. Um, sorry, for, for the, uh, yeah, yeah, so there's no public cloud support. So basically, if you have to be stuck on an earlier LTSR, but the whole point is that the cloud is constantly changing and an LTSR release doesn't make sense because new things are constantly added into those services. You want to build those into things like Citrix machine creation services, image provisioning, et cetera. So um, we have the kind of the Yelp reviews here as far as dollar signs, so you can kind of see what, what's expensive and what's not. Uh, the last thing here, pretty much the same for both of these. Uh, which basically is subscription, they're evergreen. Uh, you get to use the entitlement as well, but these are not monthly. That's kind of the big thing there. Um, the last thing to basically um, talk about here, and I, I'll, I'll pop out just for two minutes to show you the console, because uh, I want to get over to Oz, uh, basically is this is just an incredible slide that, uh, that Citrix built um, to basically show kind of what 
the overall value add is in the Citrix Better Together partnership with Microsoft. Key thing here that I would just point out is choice. The ability to take on multiple clouds if you need to, uh, obviously across all the, all you need is a cloud connector in each of those locations. Multiple identity providers now with BYO for identity. Also infrastructure is choice. You know, Nutanix, AHV, VMware, Hyper-V, Citrix Zensor, all those are possible. Um, and then the add-ons that we talked about earlier around uh, auto scale and, and uh, session recording. So I'll just take a second here to just show this. Um, basically, this is the console once you go ahead and log in. So if you go ahead and log into the CVAD service, you basically see this here, uh, which basically is um, all of the microservices that we talked about as part of the platform as a service. Uh, so we're going to obviously talk about virtual apps and desktops. Um, before we show that, I just want to show you what we're talking about with resource locations. So this is basically a resource location, again, is an entity or a data center or a cloud, a cloud location, basically, uh, which has cloud connectors, which are outbound only communication to the CVAD service platform. So you can see we have Azure East as well as our on-prem data center in there as resource locations. If you look at it from an identity perspective, you can see we have multiple avenues for identity, direct OCT integration, Active Directory, Azure AD, SAML 2.0. We have them connected across the board so we can easily flip it back and forth. You have full-on advanced delegation of administration, which can be done here uh, through that portal. Uh, the last thing I want to, or second to last thing here is just show any kind of workspace. You can come in here. External access is just as simple as coming in here, configuring connectivity, and clicking on the gateway service. Um, and then basically, you can obviously customize this, and then you can do authentication across the board. So you can see you can easily change your workspace authentication. Today, we have it on Azure AD. Tomorrow, it could be on Okta or SAML 2.0. Um, and then the last thing I'll show here, which I think is important to show, is what is that, you know, what does it look like, the new web, web portal experience in the CVAD service portal? If you go to Web Studio, um, you can see here that we have basically the hosting connections. So all the things that you're traditionally used to seeing on, on the on-prem product is here, but it's all web-based. If we go to add a new hosting connection, just to show you kind of that choice, um, just to show you that, that uh, choice, um, uh, the choice, the capability of choice here, when you click add, add, add connection here, what you'll actually see is all the different options that you have from a hypervisor perspective or a hosting perspective directly built in. You can see we have our two connections here. And I'll just quickly show this, just so, because Oz is going to show kind of the comparative to building a catalog in AVD as well as uh, WVD, and then, we'll, uh, and then we'll wrap that up. So building a new catalog basically is a, is a wizard-driven process. You choose multi-session or single session. In this case, we'll do multi-session. Multi-session, Oz will hit on it more, but multi-session is now the new Windows 10. You can do multiple users in Windows 10 only on Azure. So we'll choose Azure here so you can see comparatively. You can choose power managed or non-power managed. You go in and basically choose your master image. So in this case, that master image is just a VHD, a snapshot, or a managed disk. Uh, once you go ahead and click that, uh, what you'll do is you'll actually uh, click the resource group, click the disk, and you'll be able to click through um, it, through the, the additional steps here in the wizard. So going in on here, you can choose choice webinar, click next. It's uh, And then this is key here. So they actually are, this is from a licensing perspective. A lot of people forget this. And this wizard takes care of it. Basically, is setting the correct license. If you are, if you do have the AVD entitlement, you can check this box and it greatly decreases the cost for the compute because that's now consumed. It's not part of that uh, compute license. It's something that you're already acquiring. You do premium standard ACD here for the disks. You would just go ahead and choose the number of virtual machines you want to create. Choose the disk type here. Um, uh, you would be choose your resource group and then you would choose the computer account. Uh, it takes a minute here to go. Um, I'll see here. I guess I got another minute um, here so I can show this to you. I don't want to take up uh, too much time because I want Oz to be able to go through all his good stuff. So it's just taking a minute. It takes a minute because we have our cloud connector. On it. You know, we're on the uh, MSDN subscription, so we got limited compute. So I gave it just small resources. But, but anyways, you come in here and it'll show you all the resources within Azure. You would just pick the instance that you want. So if you do have an environment that um, if you do have an environment that is already already set up, um, it will automatically say, hey, you already have catalogs that are these instance types. You'll choose your availability zone. So I'll let Oz talk more about that when he talks through the Nerdio components. You can actually have this go across multiple availability zones, which is pretty cool. You'll choose your disk type if you want to do cache to RAM or not. Cache to RAM is valuable. If you have a really IO intensive application, you can cache to RAM versus going to the actual disk and paying for that actual premium storage. You basically will choose your resource group or where you want all these 
newly created uh, de de desktops to go. So from a scalability perspective, Citrix worked with, with Microsoft on this. So now you can have do a resource group for each catalog. There's no longer a VM limitation per, uh, per resource group. You're, you're constrained by the actual uh, limitations of Azure. So the last thing here is you just choose your naming scheme, you know, testing, and that's it, basically. Um, the last thing here is just on auto scale. Just to, just to let you know that that's built into the delivery group, you can come in here and basically choose your auto scale settings. Um, and uh, that's all built in here from Citrix. But it's key to understand that Citrix is just doing powering on and powering off. It's not doing some of the other advanced things you might uh, see here today. Monitoring is built in, which you guys uh, kind of saw through the other solutions. So that's kind of what I wanted to show here. We won't go through the WEM components uh, now. If we have time later, we can loop back to it. But again, this is kind of what the WEM console looks like. So wrapping this up, pros and cons, and then we'll, we'll hand it over here. So basically, pros, basically extremely flexible. I think you saw that through the, the, the point of choice here. You have multiple capabilities from a design perspective, active-active, active-passive, on-prem, hybrid uh, scale into Azure, AWS. So I, I really love the options there. You have the ability to use Citrix Profile Management or use FS Logics or both, right? There's an ability to use combo there. Uh, you have apps, desktops, and then remote PC capabilities. Um, can be purchased to your partner yearly or monthly. It's kind of a nice option there. Uh, we talked about using the AVD entitlement. Uh, so you'll be able to do that. User experience, as we mentioned, like Citrix and remote access has been their DNA for 30 years. They've doubled down for sure on the protocol. A lot of great new things uh, built in for adaptive transport, UDP, uh, audio, things like that. They're all kind of built in in the optimization packs. Extremely tight partnership where they extend the capabilities of AVD, which we'll talk through and basic monitoring is built in. Cons, license complexity, right? With, with great options comes great complexity. Complexity, you know, we're here to help work through that, but uh, there are some a la carte items were additional, you know, so things like advanced security functionality, uh, monitoring, et cetera, can be add on. There's a ton of features, so potentially to be shelfware, so it's important to really understand those use cases. And the last thing is just, you know, uptime is dependent, CVAD service uptime is dependent specifically on the Azure uh, architecture. So that is it. Uh, uh, now we're ready for, for Oz to uh, to take it over here for Microsoft. So hopefully that gives kind of everybody kind of a rundown of what uh, Citrix uh, provides there, uh, kind of their options uh, for for kind of EUC and, and kind of the Azure space and and um, and uh, and on prem as well. So you got uh, access there, Ozzy? Yeah, I'm getting there. Uh, we're gonna go from there. Yeah, so good stuff. So uh, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna hustle a little bit. Shane didn't do too bad, but he's a little bit over. It only f five minutes over. Not bad. That's pretty good for me. Five man. minutes. All right. So yeah. So obviously we're talking about the rebranded WVD uh, side of things, right? So Azure Virtual Desktop. Try to get that uh, burned into your head. Uh, switching the name um, on you. So. Essentially, you know, Shane touched on a lot of good subjects. We barely mentioned because we're really not focusing on the on-prem Citrix side of the house. That's the traditional side. I will say that when, when with a lot of discussions, when it goes towards, oh, you're going to use AVD or other DAS solutions, uh, Citrix, Citrix is so complex. It's all these things you got to do. They're always focusing on the traditional Citrix on-prem. So I always right. have to check the conversation and take it back and, and say, hey, we got to focus on the Citrix cloud side of things, right? Because there's all kinds of things you can do with Citrix and everybody's used to the traditional, but really this kind of conversation in the webinar today, you know, that Azure standard service piece is big. That's the more apples to apples to what we're talking about here uh, with with AVD native as well as Nerdio on top of AVD, AVD. So essentially just this architecture slide here, just want to give you a little visual. This is our nice little slick. We got a jump start that we help customers out with in, in this world. Um, and essentially we've created this little slide as our own. We, we, we dub it the Choice Solutions O365 or M365 experience. Um, so a little bit different uh, than, than the Microsoft flavor of this, but essentially it gives you an idea Kind of how it breaks down, right? You got VNets uh, for your for your you know your host, your session host. You got your FS Logic, your storage account files. Um, you, you know you got your Azure AD and your tenant stuff and the endpoints. You got to have your Azure AD connect something syncing up here to Azure Active Directory. And you got to have a tenant up and running. Um, you know they're they're constantly doing more things to where now they got a tech preview where you can potentially join session host to just Azure AD and use native. Um, but all that's tech preview. So that's one of the things I'm going to touch on as well is that Microsoft is playing catch up. 
but they're playing catch up fast, right? They're they're adding in new features constantly on a monthly basis, um, and and really trying to do do their best to catch up on this stuff. So, and then you got your control plane. So both of these are paths. So obviously you got your RD web gateway, those kind of things, the broker, the load balancing, all that is something you don't think about. The licensing, uh, similar to the Citrus Cloud situation, right? So this is kind of the standard architecture um, for Azure AD in general. And just to kind of show you, it's really for Azure, for AVD native, it's very simplistic, right? So just a screenshot here, but I'll jump into this. Essentially, this is all it is, right? In the portal, which we're lucky to have this now, we, we didn't have this before the spring release. Really, we're talking about the spring release because previous to that, it was called the fall release. If you ever played with that, it was mainly oh, PowerShell. Power yeah. yeah, it was terrible. So at least we got something in the portal now and they got this nice little landing page now, which they never had before. This was in one of the recent updates as well. But essentially this is all it is, right? So you got your host pools, your app groups, your workspaces and, and users, um, and obviously insights uh, for monitoring, but uh, it's pretty simplistic from, from that standpoint. So we're, we'll jump into that, the actual portal in a little bit, just to show you that for a quick minute, because that's really all it takes <laughs> to show that if you haven't seen it. Um, but basically, I'm just highlighting a few of the features and functionality. Uh, as Shane said, that we're not touching on everything, and we, and we can't. We'd, have, we'd need three hours to do that. But really, some of the ones that just came into my head as we're doing this is, is endpo endpoint support now. Uh, if you were in the early days of WVD, they had hardly anything. Now they're pretty good about that, right? They're pretty across the board. They might not have everything Citrix has from a CWA uh, workspace app. But they got Windows, Web, Mac OS, Android, iOS, and then they work with thin client, client manufacturers like iGel is a big one for us on the partner landscape uh, to do the Linux piece, right? So protocol support, you're going to see things different there. This stuff we're talking about all the time, right? RDP, it's basically TCP. They now have short path and tech preview, but, you know, that gives you that UDP. But I want to tell you, that's very different from the Citrix. Citrix created a whole new protocol, EDT where it does them in parallel, tries UDP, falls back to TCP, figures out the conditions, does not need direct line of sight. That's key here. This one, to get UDP and uh, AVD, you need direct line of sight, which is an additional cost from uh, like a point to site from a home or, or whatever. With everybody working remote these days in COVID, this is, this is an additional cost to even get this. So it works differently, even though it gives you that possibility. It needs direct line of sight with, with the endpoint and Azure. Uh, PaaS, just like the Citrix side of the world, Citrix Cloud, it's got the, uh, you know, those components I mentioned, the Azure portal support, the spring release, thank God we got the portal experience now. It's got some features comparatively to Citrix where they're playing catch up on the screen capture protection is one of them. They don't have the anti-key logging, but they got the capture protection. Uh, obviously, monitor, insight, sentinel, um, you know, they, they've now got this all tech preview and running GA actually for the monitor. I think uh, it's all additional costs, of course, everything Azure is additional costs. Uh, App Attach, when you get into that, the, the, that's in the portal now. Um, a Defender for endpoint integration with MS uh, for the multi-session stuff, right? They 50 from concurrent sessions you can manage on a multi-session uh, session host, right? Teams optimization. Not near as nice as the Citrix piece here. Citrix did a lot of development on the virtual channels for HDX, Teams optimization. Yeah, this one's a little bit hokey comparatively. Believe it or not, my, Citrix has done a better job, in my opinion, on the Teams optimization than Microsoft's done in their AVD products. Yeah. Um, and then the profile and office container managing, you only know, got FS Logic, it's smoking good, right? So real quick on the on the demo stuff. So let me, uh, let me quick get out of here. I'm going to jump in here. So what I was mentioning here on the on the on your portal, you know, you're familiar with this. Really, just to show you a couple things from a manual. Everything you do for AVD is manual, right? So that's why we're talking to our our partner. Uh, we usually go to go to bat with Nerdio as our as our third party, because literally everything you do is is very manual and simplistic in the portal here, right? So you got the concept of, of essentially host pools. I got a validation pool, a couple other pools. That I've created with uh, with Nerdio um, from that tool, and, and in there, really, what you got to is your to to compare to policies on the Citrix side. You just have RDP stuff, right? You can control 
RDP capability and policy for device redirection. Some of the things, if you're familiar with Citrix, you got all that Citrix policies, and they got a very robust policy engine for many, many, many things, right? Not near as many here. Basically, on your RDP stuff, some redirection, those kind of things, some basic stuff here, your display sessions, and they put it all together and they make a file, basically, that they're delivering you with the Windows desktop client for, or the Azure desktop client, they call it now, um, for this, right? So really, it's in here and your host pool, it's just RDP properties. Um, and, and the concept of host pools like your machine catalogs, right? application groups go along with or, or uh, essentially where you'd be like your delivery groups in the citrix world so just to compare that you know that's essentially all you're doing here is, is permissions uh, you're doing in this case applications if i had an application on one of these i got like edge uh, i think on this one yep so edge and you got your assignments pretty that's it right you got your assignments and then you got workspace which is like citrix workspace this is where you go in, you log in with the, you know, with the client here. Um, the client refreshes your workspace in in the remote desktop client and pulls it up here. So this is like comparatively to the Citrix workspace, uh, you know, control plane is or access plane as far as that goes, right? And that's it, right? Uh, that's pretty much it from that standpoint. So it's pretty easy. I can breathe, you know, burn through that pretty quick, right? So we get back to where we're going with that. So the licensing, you get it in, a, in, a, in various ways, right? I'm not gonna go through all these, there you go. So if you have one of these packages, it's, they made it nice and neat, you get it with it. You don't get the consumption cost with it, so don't let them fool you. Um, you just get the entitlement to use it at that Linux compute rate type thing that Shane had mentioned earlier, where you say you already have licenses. Well, that's basically giving you that, that Linux compute rate. Um, saying you're, you know, you already got the entitlement to use it. Yeah, it's like a 60, 70 percent discount. On the, yeah, it's on huge, the right? It's, yeah, it's don't big. ever forget. Don't ever forget that, right? And then same with the Windows Server per user per device RDS Cal license with active software insurance, you get it. And the big new one here is kind of like this because uh, I got customers that have asked about it from a SaaS standpoint for external non-employee users now you can use you can actually buy this outside of the other entitlements in the m3 and uh, in all those other packages that's brand new as of this month uh this pay it pay you per user per month fee right yeah so that that's like competitive to like citrix with the monthly on the cvad subscription for sure and yep. but i like that that one piece you had there that is no no commitment no payment until december that's a pretty big yeah, they got a uh, promo going on run. yeah i know man saw that big promo so if you need that for like non-employee type users, you know, they got that option there now, at least. Before you couldn't do it at all. Like if you had not users that weren't part of your organization, you could not deliver this to them technically by license. Uh, pros and cons, uh, you know, they're they're adding features of functionality, fast and furious. Obviously COVID kicked them in the butt and got that moving, right? But before that, it was kind of stagnant. It wasn't really much. Um, titlements, many packages, licensing, very simple. Sim the simplicity there comparatively to the Citrix side of the house where you got all kinds of things to sort through. We can help with that, of course, but there's a lot to think about. Um, the Azure portal, Azure AD, you know, the familiarity for most Azure admins is there. It's PaaS only, uh, none of the on-prem stuff that Citrix can give you. Um, uh, so there's no additional options to even think about from that standpoint. They have FS Logics now, man, robust profile management solution there at least. They are putting a lot of development into it, unfortunately, from their side, but it was a solid product going in. It's pretty much the same as it was when they bought it, yeah. but FS Logic is awesome, right? Uh, fairly broad endpoint support now, thank goodness. At one point, they didn't even have mobile support, and many built RBAC controls, and, and some of the cons, not as mature. Obviously, Citrix has been doing a long time, lack of features. Uh, again, PaaS only, <laughs> so there's no additional <laughs> options. So you're all in Azure, right? If you're going AVD native, all in Azure. That's that's no on-prem workloads. On-prem, no no AWS as a fallback. It's, it's you're Azure at that point. Um, no additional bells and whistles really, other than FS Logics. The monitoring is an add-on, no matter how you write it up. Um, whereas Citrix has the basic monitoring piece included. Uh, no, no federation support right now. Another preview one that just came out is it being able to use, yes, it seems a little weird going backwards, but ADFS to do what Citrix has been doing nicely for quite some time now with federation services. So they finally 
heard the call for that and have, have yeah. said, well, you use ADFS to kind of do, because if you're familiar with any of these solutions, you have a double prompt, you hit your desktop and you got to log in again. There's no getting around that. Whereas uh, those of us familiar with the Citrix world, it was a seamless login if you use Federation services. They Microsoft has hasn't had anything like that. You had to log in again. Right? It's real hokey. And that requires the Azure AD tenant identity um, for that. So Nerdio is our third party go to that we that we work with because you really need a go to solution, right? Uh, they got their manager for WVD. They extend that native basically that AVD admin experience. Um, essentially what this looks like, there's a lot of stuff here that they do. They do all the stuff that you would expect in an enterprise yeah. solution for AVD that, that, that Microsoft doesn't have, period. Hard stop, right? So they basically just build on top of that and, and uh, you know, basically you have a resource group with the Nerdio components in it. And their big thing is operation, you know, operational management and to some degree monitoring where they really, they really take that to the real game uh with this solution um I, i'm not going to go through all these but as you can see they they do anything you can think of one of our counterparts uh james kendon if you're familiar with him he, we work with him a lot he's one of the bubs he said it best the other day when we were talking to him he's like man everything i can think of where i need it i go to nerdio and i look in there and they have it <laughs> it's like they, it's just there right so yeah, they're, they're on that fast release cycle so they'll bring they'll they'll bake your feedback right in on a sprint so it's been pretty will, cool to see and they're constantly updating it Right, so it gives you the automation of the images, the host pools, the integration, the visibility, self-healing, all that sweet stuff, right? That it's the ongoing management and those kind of things. The big thing is auto scales, right? They really they can auto scale stuff up and take them away. Whereas even in the Citrix world right now, there's PowerShell to do that. There's nothing in the GUI yet, um, but they've got it real slick in there to what saves you a ton of money from the eye that pays for itself. Right. They've showed us many times on large deployments and it, it just gives you the actual cost of what you save because you just basically can set a time where some of those hosts are taken away. They're drained, taken away. You can't do any of that in AVD portal native. You can't do any of that. Right. It's, it's just not there. Um, so it, it makes it it gives you that those capabilities that you really should have from the beginning. And then just to show a little bit of the Nerdio experience here. So this is the the dashboard that we've got going on for our our lab, right? Our small lab. So you got your summary uses, you know, how you're using it. But the kind of the big thing is here is is your workspaces and your desktop bins. Basically, your workspace, everything you can configure, everything like I just showed you, the host pools, the workspace, and all that, you can figure directly from here. You don't have to go to the AVD portal at all. You can if you really want to, and you can change it there, and then it just reads it from in, within here. But you would use this at that point. So what what's nice about it is that you know we just Shane and I basically when we first started using this we did we we always did we we do this test where we don't even read the documentation we just start going through it. It's kind of funny we're just like how far can we get before we start stumbling around and we don't know what we're doing. And you, we got pretty darn far right. So everything's pretty it's super intuitive. Yeah. Intuitive right. So you got your workspace, all this you create within the GUI. As you can see, I got a multi-session, a single session workspace. Uh, it's easy to tell them you want the, the remote apps versus desktops. Um, you know, that, that that's the thing is everything, application groups and AVD is, it's named application groups, but it can be a desktop or apps. Um, it tells you who's on it, you know, the hosts, what's, what's up, what's not. You know, like, as you can see, I've got auto scale, like I was talking about set when it scales and those kind of things um you know they, they've got images that you can select and and bake right in obviously kind of like what he was showing from the quick deploy or the citrus cvad service and then that monthly cost here is important we don't have enough history to show that but you would see exactly how much you're saving uh due to the auto scale configuration right so this is the most important thing is you got this the, the sizing you can tell it it's based on whatever thing you want to have so many hosts ready to go. You want to have so many burst ready to go. Uh, your scaling logic, so on and so forth. When, when to remove them, scale in, you know, like uh, gets to a certain time of day. Um, you know, when do we remove them? Um, and then the start of work hours and pre-staging, everything that you could think about, messaging, auto healing broken hosts, so on and so forth. And this stuff works splendidly. And it's, it's just fantastic from that standpoint. So I just wanted to show you that because that's such a big thing. 
you got all the other capabilities you saw in there with the app attached straight from the GUI, the application groups, creating them from here. All I did is create the edge one. I just go and I just went in here. You know, you can create your app groups. It asks you what apps you can, you know, it's super, super easy to do that, right? And then on the properties of the pool, obviously you can you can see in here. Um, you know, kind of some of the basic stuff like I was showing before, all the redirection policies, all those things. And then they have stuff that's even slicker. Like we were saying, like GPU drivers, usually I'm a GPU guy. We have to install, Shane and I have to install the GPU drivers in the image before we do the GPU stuff. Well, they've just, they took that from community, uh, you know, feedback. And now you can just click a button and I don't have to worry about it, right? So they accelerated networking. Uh, that's a big one. Right, we can do it right from here. Otherwise, you got to go shut a VM down, run a PowerShell script in the AVD side, turn it on. Blah. You can just do the accelerated networking right from here, right? So you can see all the things you can do here. You can distribute across availability zones. We did FS Logics profiles you can have on or off here. We have it controlled via GPO still. Um, and then the monitoring piece, you can configure your monitor insights. Uh, with that, you know, I'll hit that right down here. They got the scripted based actions, incredibly powerful. You can see some of the stuff you can do straight from here. None of this is even even thought of on the AVD native side. Um, and like I was saying, on the monitoring, it takes you. We got Sapago set up. They got a deal with Sapago where they make it very cheap. It's like 50 cents per user, not including consumption, but 50 cents per user to use this. It gives you that analytics type dashboard stuff that you would expect. That's different. They they partnered with Microsoft. They created a, a dashboard, a Nerdio based dashboard for this, uh, with Sapago to be able to give you some of that uh, to tie in. Right? You can you can use the WVD monitor slash you know, built in analytics as well um, from that standpoint. But um, you know, so that gives you the analytics. The files. Just want to show you there. We tied in our existing. We already had a storage deal but you could just as easily uh you know create one new so we already had one where you can manage this um, you could add one from here it'll just prompt you for everything usually if you're familiar with this you got to go manually do all this stuff right um you get it's just point and prompt you know prompt and put in your information and done it goes out you know if you've given that that account that app account the nerdio account permissions you need to do it goes out and does it yeah, there's typically a lot of steps to set that up and set it up right with permissions and everything like that. So they're taking care of all that for you again, giving you yeah. that FS Logics capability, which again, FS Logics, for those of you that don't know, we mentioned a couple of times, but essentially it was acquired by Microsoft. It's a container solution, VHD at login. That's really meant if you're a 365 customer, you're using Office 365 or using OneDrive, it's a must have. I mean, that's a, you know, we could talk to you more of capabilities of it, it can do later, but that's kind of the big deal there. Yeah. And then really quick, the last thing, I, I didn't want to forget about it, Shane wanted me to mention it, but you got the uh, API integration here, which is key. Um, you know, you can you enable it, you, you know, you have your key, whatever, and you can go out here and you can do any all your automation, guys, you know, you can come in here. It's got full API integration. You can do whatever you want to do here from that standpoint. So just really slick stuff. Um, running low on time, so that's... I just wanted to show you, obviously there was a lot more to show you there than there was on the AVD native side. So everything AVD related is same as previous slides, named user CCU. Um, they got that special deal with Sapago, like I was talking about for monitoring, or you can use the, the native, um, you know, Azure analytics uh, monitor capability. Um, you know, pros, cons, it adds these enterprises, simply it adds the enterprise level features uh, that you'd be, you'd ex be expected to have, right? So really as a, as a partner company, we aren't gonna be doing a lot of WVD native by itself. Right? There you go, I said it again, AVD native by AVD. itself. Drink a beer, shot. Uh, yeah, but Nerio is gonna be our solution uh, that we're gonna be put, you know, putting on top of there because really it's, it's, it's too hokey. <laughs> Sketchy, whatever you want to call it, just by itself. Unless you're yeah, if you're here. like a 10 user shop, I mean, you'll get by without it. But I mean, the cool thing too is like you can, there's a 30 day trial at the box, right? So we can, we typically use it on our proof of concepts. And then if, if you do take Nerdy away, everything's native to the API. So you can still function without it, right? It's just, yep. it's just calling all those functions for you. Auto scaling obviously isn't going to work. That's something that they built a lot. Yeah, they about. do it within their paths or the, yeah. that service that you deploy in your environment, right? That auto scale and takeaway. 
So obviously it's an add-on cost, um, very very small from that standpoint, from what I've seen. And then dependent, it's dependent on RDP, right? They're not changing the game. They're not they're not doing a new protocol. Um, so it's just building on the management operations and monitoring, which are the big misses uh, from my, from Microsoft. Right? Citrix yep. is the only one that has their own protocol. You, when you turn this stuff over to Citrix, you're turning you're then using all the HDX goodness, the EDT goodness, all of that stuff you get and uh, above and beyond just the management operations, right? Uh, and then quick, you know, a little bit of eye chart slide. Uh, you can you can see here the easy update. You know, I've just kind of like selectively put color code in what has what. The asterisk at the top is, is to eliminate that uh, for a CBAD service, it's really a PowerShell to do the auto scale right now. But they have the power management easily. So built specifically, the, yeah, the auto where it will build new VMs. It'll yep, do power on and power off, but building new VMs or uh, it won't do off of. Yep. You know. And then the plus plus here with the AVD plus Nerdio and the easy update. And you can schedule your master image, that whole master image concept that you have in MCS. You can schedule it to go do that. It'll shut it down. It'll sys prep it. It'll create the disk. It'll then use the same machine names and then update your session host. And your pools will be updated at Sunday at 2 a.m. Right, well, super slick profile management across the board. Uh, you, you know, between profile management and uh, FX Logics, UEM really Citrix has got has that man. WEM is an incredible product. Um, yeah, that one, uh, it, I guess I shouldn't have had the check mark here because technically you don't get WEM with CVAD standard. So the user environment management, which is WEM, is kind of in these additional ones. And then, uh, as you can see here, we talked about it, EDT, HDX, the management tooling, slick, nothing here, um, no flexibility or hybrid, right? So your flexibility and hybrid are here. I would put a little check mark next to CVAD standard Azure because you got remote PC that you can do with it too. I know, that's kind of the thing. That was added right. special, so. Right. Yeah. Security is really your Azure native security stuff with, with these two. Um, you got your advanced policy engine with CVAD standard with Azure, and then you got your WIM added on with the other ones. Federation SSO, um, you know, that's AVD native with the asterisk because it's tech free. It just came out as a possibility. I haven't really tried it yet. Scripted actions is just a nerdy -o thing, man. They're super slick as far as that goes and what they're doing there. Um, and it's kind of the ecosystem we're running we're running short here yeah we'll just yeah just real quick uh, there's a community tool uh avd admin that's out there and then we use automate for load testing of our avd wvd and citrix workloads and then control it for monitoring and analytics and stuff that we do we can just hit the next slide and then we'll just hit the last one because we're at the kind of the last deal here so yeah, we're actually right at time but yeah for us for just another minute or two yeah yeah, we're, we got a service that we we deliver to help folks kind of figure this stuff out, right? You can read this, but, you know, Shane and I, this is Shane and I service where we're going through stuff that we're talking about and more, a lot more in, in this in this webinar as a service, right? So you can certainly reach out to us because we talk through everything, you know? Yeah. Not just the cloud situation, but identity, you know, GPU or non-GPU, you, you know, use Unified these, communications, yeah. You can read all this stuff, right? We get into it all during these these sessions. We can tailor it to your needs. We can make a different, uh, you know, workshop session time lengths, you know, two, three hour sessions as we go. Um, but this is kind of our, our our deal there. So that that was the last. We're at the top of the hour. I know Ellie's got a couple of questions that she wants to wants to do, yep. and I'll let her do that. Yes, just real quick. Um, if you guys just wanted to just take a couple seconds. So just the value of information you received today from our session, we'd really appreciate it. Just taking the time, give you a couple more seconds. Um, thank you guys for voting. Okay, and then the second one, just if you if you guys would like us to follow up with you, um, you can select one or multiple if you want. Just if you wanna be contacted, just how, how we could help you. Um, yeah, and cool. certainly, you know, we didn't have a lot of time if you didn't click on something here, but you can reach out to us or we'll probably reach out to you anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're totally happy to help. And we've been doing this a long time. And, and the, that's really what these advisory workshops are for, just a couple half day sessions to just talk about all this stuff because it's changing rapidly and uh, we're happy to help. So we appreciate you joining today yep. and uh, spending time with us. Yeah, thank you. We're out. Peace. Yes, and right. if we answer your questions, we'll send you guys a note. Um, thank you, everybody, for joining. Oz, 
and Shane, you guys did a great job. Thank you. Have a great day. Awesome. Thank you. Take care, everybody. Peace. All right, bye.